to do pull video for the City of Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. Now we have quite a unique banner to talk about this time around, and a character that's coming with it that's actually really quite elevated in terms of where the game is right now in Aerith, providing buffs that own and debuffs as well that only she can realistically provide within this era of the game. So if you want to know more about the about the banner, what's coming on with it, with some misconceptions that I think need to be addressed as well about that banner, and about Aerith of course as well, and ultimately whether you should pull or not, then stay tuned and keep on watching. Before we get started, of course, don't forget to check out all of my social media links in the description box below where I, with Twitch and Discord and Twitter and all that good stuff. Twitch, I now stream Final Fantasy XIV twice a week, so you can come and find me doing that on either Tuesday nights or on Sunday mornings. And of course, I do stream all of my uh, Dissidia Opera Omnia events as they come to pass. And I'm so close to the end of Final Fantasy III now, I can taste it for Final Fantasy Count Up. And I'm really looking forward to moving on to Final Fantasy IV. But also with Patreon, I always shout out one of my patrons every time I release a video, and today that person is going to be Lion, who honestly sent me one of the sweetest messages on Discord that I cherish very much, and I'm very, very thankful for that as well. So thank you very much for being a part of that. And if you would like to join up on Patreon just like Lion has, amongst others, then you can get a title card made just for you, just like they have just down here, as well as other benefits like voice chats that we all do together, one of which will be happening this week, in fact. And uh, being involved with the Would You Pull portion of the videos as well, then definitely consider having a look at the link in the description box below for that. Don't forget, of course, to check all of the other links in the description box for Decidia or Opera Omnia, as you can see from all the icons around me, and and of course all the other fabulous content creators out, out there that also cover the game as well as myself. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about the banner and honestly there's not an awful lot else to talk about in this particular video because we don't know when this banner is actually coming as was stated in the community stream earlier in the month. So we don't know exactly what's going to be coming along with it or even when it's going to be happening. So I decided to make this video as much in advance as I possibly could. But this banner is a little bit different to other banners. So it's going to feature all of Aerith's gear, including her brand new LD, and it should also feature Emperor's Burst as well. But as well as Aerith's 1535 in DX, it's also going to feature everybody else's, like everyone's, 1535 and DX. Now there is a misconception here that this banner gives you less of a chance to get Aerith's LD or Emperor's Burst if that's what you're going for, but the reality is that the rates are still the same when it comes to LD and Burst on this sort of thing, and even Aerith's gear being featured, but off banners do technically return on this banner, and that may be off-putting to some, and if you want Aerith's LD it might lead you to want to spend gems on it instead of tickets but the rates are actually still the same. It's more of a psychological thing that a lot of people go through when they want to pull on a banner like this. So if you're wanting to go for Aerith's LD and it is a very good one, I'll spoil that now, then you may want to consider using gems purely for a psychological reason. Anyways, going into Aerith, we've never really covered Aerith all that much on this channel, much like Celes, because she's kind of flown under the radar most of the times that she's been released. But her LD does elevate her in a lot of ways. Now she doesn't get a rework, which obviously means that she's bad, right? <laughs> but she, you know, her skills aren't really where her power is, which sounds very weird to say, but when we get to her LD, you'll see why I'm to why I mean this. Now Healing Wind and Prayer of the Cetera are essentially just as supporty healy as you can possibly get. Healing Wind is a brave battery that puts some extra party buffs up, like initial bravery, things like that. Prayer of the Cetra is another heal that, you know, resurrects a member from KO status, which isn't particularly helpful now because KO status still detracts your score quite a lot. But later down the line, that restriction actually gets lifted, so it becomes slightly more useful than it was to begin with. But this also gives her brave regen, it raises her defense, it also raises things like her max bravery, she gets magic attack up and like lots of little bits and pieces and she gets a brave attack plus and an HP attack plus from it. And her bravery plus is a party battery, which is actually very helpful as we'll see when we get to her LD weapon. Now her EX did help her out quite a lot, like so it's a fast recasting EX, well normal to start with, and then she also gets last stand from this which is helpful. She gets a, a, like a, a slightly more advanced brave plus and HP plus from this, 
and basically it increases the party's attack by a significant amount and the amount of brave overflow that they get by 30% for stolen bravery, so bravery that you steal from the enemy, as well as gained overflow, so a battery effect just like Aerith's. And then the plus version of it when that came out made it so that she got attacks off of it so that she could do an actual HP attack because a lot of the kit doesn't really have one until now, until this point in time, where she got a further increase in recast speed for it, so it's actually very fast casting. It also, like, you start all the, like, with all of her buffs, so you don't have to use her skills quite so often, and you get a Brave plus plus plus, and an HP plus plus plus, which, her HP plus 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 was a three hit Brave HP attack, which was at the time very strong, and her Brave plus, uh, triple plus, is again, a four hit Bravery attack, that batteries the party. Now, when we come to her LD, her LD transforms her quite significantly while still keeping her in very much the same role. And she has something that's very heavily desired by parties in general, and very few characters actually have. The most noteworthy one being Lena. So to look at what Seal Evil actually does, with all of its power stones and everything, you get six turns of this buff of Seal Evil. You get a uh, party battery first, then an HP attack, then a six hit, a brave HP attack following it, that's gonna give uh, like brave damage or, or splash damage to the enemies at the same time. And then this buff raises party debuff evasion by 100%. So while this buff is active, you cannot be debuffed at all. So like I said, Lena is the only other character that we've used very frequently with this, or Afmao has, uh, has something similar as well, and Warrior of Light has it for himself. But not only that, but it's also a debuffing buff that reduces their attack, their speed by 20%, and their defense quite heavily as well. But the main thing that comes off of Seal Evil is actually a follow-up attack that follows pretty much any moves that she does that target an enemy. So this is like a gravity-based damage similar to X-Death, where it reduces their bravery equal to her attack, and it embatteries the party equal to the same number, but it can't break the enemy. And then it deals the HP damage as it were, like equal to what her bravery is currently. So think along the lines of X Death and Penelo. It extends her own buffs by a turn, except for this one. I will add that. And it also adds a uh, a, a debuff to the enemy that increases HP damage they take, which is always valuable. And it also stops them from being able to buff themselves. So realistically, there's a lot of Balthea in Aerith but done in a way that's preventative rather than responsive. So where Balthea can cleanse all buffs, dispel all debuffs, Aerith makes it so that they never happened in the first place. And the big part of her attack here, the follow-up attack, is that you get an HP attack of it that doesn't consume her bravery. So very Pinello, we've seen that in her reacts and how powerful that can be. But the reason that I mentioned her Brave Plus or quite so frequently when talking about her other skills is that while this buff is active, you can be using her Brave Triple Plus to battery the party, get the follow-up, and then not lose the bravery after doing a pretty hefty attack at the end of it, and it just all adds up to a really nice kit. She's got healing in her kit through her skills if you need it. She's got a massive amount of party auras and stuff. In fact, her party auras, like I said, with her EX, you get uh, Brave Overflow and Stolen Overflow. You get an initial bravery 70% for the entire party, so if you pair her up with the likes of Cecil, having initial bravery is going to be very valuable to him. And and obviously having the HP damage and Brave damage like percentage base go up is very nice as well. Max Bravery goes up by 75% to the party and your attack goes up by 100% to the party. And that's on top of all of the buffs that she gives herself. Her C65 actually has Bravery gen in it as well. So you can take advantage of that if you want to. Like it, she doesn't have it naturally, but you can give it to your party through her C65. But the fact that you get complete debuff immunity and prevent your opponent from buffing at all, whilst being able to stay safe while batterying your party with a bravery plus attack that follows up with an HP plus that doesn't drain her bravery, keeping her even more safe, and it not being actual brave damage, it's a reduced damage similar to X-Death, it's very, very powerful. However, the only, the only negative things that I can say about this LD realistically is that it's a six turn buff, you get four uses of Seal Evil, so you get a decent number of uses of it, 
but you've got to be careful not to run out of them too quickly. Like, if you know that the enemy's not going to use a buffing or debuffing attack, like, on that off turn that you don't have Seal Evil, then you may want to consider delaying it by a turn before you reapply it. But then, of course, then you don't get the follow-up attacks as well and the planet's punishment. There's, it's a very strong attack. But you realistically are going to be using her LD... Bravery plus or HP plus if you want a double dump just for extra HP damage But obviously you're not gonna have as much bravery to, to retain as you would if you used a brave triple plus and then her EX when it comes up And then you'll only realistically use her skills to regenerate the buffs that you get from them You're then not actually all that useful But quite honestly when all you're having to do is stand there and you're providing that much to the party It's good stuff now, in terms of call abilities and things like that, Aerith's not really a character you're going to be bringing along for her call abilities. Most of her buffs and her auras, etc., are tied to buffs that she has for herself, and therefore she doesn't retain them when she leaves the battlefield, like some other characters, like when they come in and inflict debuffs like Caius, etc. Aerith doesn't really do that. And you don't get the bit of seal evil that you really want, which is that debuff immunity and the buff immunity, things like that. So realistically, her call abilities, you, if you're going to be using Aerith, chances are that it's going to be in your main party and not so much in call abilities. There may be uses for this because you get um, a, a, like a nice heal off of Prayer of the Cetera, though being realistic, we get a lot of really good healing abilities nowadays in calls. And seal evil is pretty much just a damage dealing move, which is not what you'd expect from a character like Aerith. Like you get a big party battery, which is nice and could see use. And then you get a decent amount of, of damage and double HP done. But again, there's a lot of LD calls that do that kind of thing. And while it's nice that you get magic attack up by 80%, this could be useful for certain characters if you feel that your character isn't doing quite enough damage. But I think it's definitely on the more niche end of LD calls. In terms of her high armor, we've got a support keystone, which ordinarily I don't particularly like because I think that 5% in the grand scheme of things doesn't add an awful lot. But because Aerith's attack boosts are already so high, I think that compounding it with an extra 5% and having the party's bravery and HP damage dealt to like to capitalize on that big attack buff is a reason to go for it with Aerith if you're planning on using her a lot as well. Now, when it comes to her artifacts, that big max bravery buff that I spoke about comes with a caveat. Aerith is one of the characters that came with cursed artifacts. So she has two artifacts that are unique to her and are rarer than most. So you will want to try and get hold of those or at least her healing wind charge. Prayer of the Cetra charge you can live without because realistically you're not actually using Prayer of the Cetra all that often anyway. But healing wind charge and boost all, like having the extra healing winds is nice, but party max bravery by 45% just by having the three artifacts you're gonna want that. And then because you're doing damage with Aerith now, you're using her Brave Pluses and her HP Plus and the LD attack and the EX attack now, you're gonna want attack on her, which is weird for a healer support character, but you're gonna want as much attack as you can get, especially when that follow-up scales off of her attack stat. Now, as I said earlier, we don't actually know exactly when Aerith's banner is going to drop or any of the stuff that comes with it, only that it is part of the Spring Festival campaign. Though, if I were to stab a guess, I would imagine that this banner will turn up between uh, Eldnarsh's Lost Chapter next week and Emperor and Sellers' banner that's just been. So I, my estimate would be around this Friday. So if you want to, but don't quote me on that, but if you want to have a rough guideline, that's based on when JP released her and it was between those two events. So instead, we're gonna jump into to straight into the should you pull portion of the video. Now, personally, I think that Aerith is a pretty big one for a pretty large variety of players, and that includes myself. I plan to use gems on this banner because I think that despite the awkward appearance of her banner, like her LD is just great in so many ways. Like no one has the full debuff evasion like Lena did in the EX era like this, and therefore Aerith being the only person that do does that 
as well as providing a complete buff prohibition, a really strong follow-up attack that she doesn't lose her bravery on. She's so well balanced at what she does and you don't even look at her skills, which is a very weird thing for a character, because you only really use them, as I said earlier, to reapply her buffs or in an emergency if you need bravery and to not attack, because otherwise you're just losing turns on that LD, on that LD buff. But if you've ever played like Pinello and her EX in the past, you know how good having a, an HP attack that doesn't drain bravery is. So to have that access to an attack that you can spam doing that, there's Brave Plus followed by follow up, you get the big HP damage, everyone gets batteried for it. It's a lot. And on top of that great healing if you need it, the C65, the massive auras, and then buff prohibition and debuff evasion. Those are two very, very powerful things to have on the same character. The only other character I can think of that's even comparable to this in this era is actually Balthea, which is a weird comparison to make, but they do buff, they do both fulfill that buff debuff management role, where, uh, where, but where one is reactive, which is Balthea having the master spells, having the Izunaga, things like that, Aerith is more preventative. So by having the seal evil buff and the debuff that comes with it, they never happen in the first place. So, and, and they also, they're different in that one's range damage, one's magic damage, uh, one is like more like healing and battery related. Like chances are you're probably gonna bring Aerith along more often than not. But Balthia still provides that brave and HP damage plus that Aerith doesn't, even if like she, what well, she does, just not quite as much of it. They are, there are similarities, but there's no, there's no problem with having them both because if something resists magic, you just bring Balthia. And if there is this range, you bring Aerith. Like, they're both fantastic characters to have within that role, but if, like, honestly, Aerith is better because she just provides so much else and doesn't use up her skills doing it. The only problem with her is that her LD buff could last a little longer. And honestly, if the banner appears awkward to you because of the 1535 EX of every other character, trust me when I say it doesn't impact your, your actual statistics for pulling for Aerith, but I understand that people's subjective look on luck and how like when you get a gold orb, there's every chance it's not gonna be Aerith LD is a thing for you, then you may wanna avoid it. Or if you don't care about Emperor's Burst, cause I know there's a lot of people out there that don't, and that aren't me. Um, she does actually return on a really nice banner as well, which is a, one that a lot of people are gonna be pulling on, which will be Tidus's LD and Burst. So when that came out in JP, Aerith's LD was on there as well. So if you wanna wait for that, provided that like that bug with Tidus wasn't like, you know, foretelling for anything that might come about in the future, then that's something that you could have as an option as well. But by and large, Aerith is just a really good character now. And then finally, it's time for Would You Pull, the section of the video where you, the viewer, get your chance to make your voice heard and let everyone know whether you would or wouldn't pull on a banner and why. Yeah, this banner is a pretty dead cert for a lot of people. So according to all of my patrons who voted and commented, and a massive thank you goes out to you all once again for your help in these, basically everyone is pulling for Aerith in some fashion or another. 42% of people said that they were gonna go in with gems. 55% of people said that they were gonna go in with 100 or more tickets. 3% of people said they were gonna go in with less than 100 tickets and 0% said that they weren't gonna pull on this banner at all. Now, Aerith is just great. She's just good. Like, like, she does so many different things all at once and you can't take it away from her. And there's a lot of people that just want her guaranteed because of the way the banner works and they kind of just want to save themselves the hassle of getting those gold orbs and them not being what they want them to be. So to go into some of those comments, uh, Weird Paragon says, Her LD is on the busted level to Fantastic and she could be dropped into any team as a support character and do just fine. She was one of my first EX pluses and it's actually saddened me that I haven't used her that much recently. This weapon changes that. Aerith gets my gems. Literally how I feel about this. Like, it's just a fantastic weapon and like you want you want to get it. Like, realistically, it's got like a lot of use up until this day even. Like, look, even the JP version of the game uses this a lot. It's just got everything all tied into one neat package. And she's a fa fan favorite as well to boot. So it's all bonus, really. G Terra says, absolutely a gem pull here, no question. Her LD is fantastic, as noted by many others. She has a fantastic HP triple plus and brave triple plus, both of which make use of her LD follow-up. 
Unfortunately, her S skill 1, 2, and EX is situational, which can cause a conflict in not wanting to use them while the LD is active. This can be worked through. We'll play in a similar vein to Vincent LD, but as a support, bringing more to the whole party. I think this is the only issue with Aerith, in that you kind of do still need to use her skill 1, 2, and EX to make sure her buffs are at their maximum capacity, certainly her EX. But her EX is still an attack, so you can still get a lot out of it. And you just want to try and make sure you're using that HP and Brave Plus as much as physically possible while you've got that buff. But you, but as said here, you can get around it and it does work. Kai says, Aerith is one of my favourite ladies from the Final Fantasy series. With a fantastic LD coming, she's a definite pull for me. However, depending on my resources from Emperor and Sellers, I might use tickets over gems. But thanks to Divine Ramu, I can be a bit more flexible. Aerith is a really strong, powerful support which has longevity down the road and is still used in JP even to this day. Enough said, really. Enough said there. I can't really add anything that I haven't already said to this. And then Kendall McKenzie finally says, Aerith being a fan favourite of mine and the fact that she's coming back with a powerful LD, she's a definite gem pool. However, depending on how nice your terribly sellers banner treats me, I may have to go harder with tickets than gems, since there are banners later down the line I want to save gems for. Regardless, I'm going to try my best to gun for her because I feel like she's going to be a very powerful support unit in the next coming months for a lot of different events. And it's true. Like, there's if you don't want to take it from me, take it from everybody else that's like commented in these polls because that's the reason that I do these. Because I think that for you to hear it from people outside of my own opinion is valuable in aiding you on like trying to figure out whether you should pull on this. And it's a pretty unanimous thing. You should probably be pulling on it, Riff. So that's going to be all for today's video. Thank you all very much for joining me today. Let me know in the comments below whether you are pulling for Aerith or how you're pulling for Aerith if you are, or even more so if you're not pulling for Aerith and you're perhaps saving her for later down the line for whatever reason that she comes back. Let me know in the comments below as to why you wouldn't want to consider pulling on this one. Obviously, don't forget to like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and click that notification bell for any future videos I might be making. And Hopefully she's nice to me, because uh, normally when I go in with gems, it normally ends up in a pity recently, so hopefully that doesn't happen. So, with that note, I shall leave you with that. Thank you all very much for watching once again, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.